Welcome to a lesson on the properties of limits. In this video, we will be going over the following properties of limits one at a time. We will also verify each property graphically. The first property is the limit as x approaches a of the quantity f of x plus g of x equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. As an example, if we are given the limit as x approaches two of x squared plus x, we can rewrite this as a sum of two limits as the limit as x approaches two of x squared plus the limit as x approaches two of x. Let's determine the sum of the two limits on the right. We can determine both limits by performing direct substitution, but for review, let's also look at this graphically. For the first limit, let's look at the graph of f of x equals x squared. Notice as we approach two from the left and the right, we are approaching a function value of four. So this first limit is equal to four, and then we have plus. For the limit as x approaches two of x, let's look at the graph of g of x equals x. As we approach two from the left and the right, we are approaching a function value of two, which gives us four plus two, which equals six. To verify this, we can also look at the graph of the original function x squared plus x graphed here in black. Notice how as we approach two from the left and the right, we are approaching a function value of six. And once again, we could have determined all of these limits by performing direct substitution. The next property is very similar, but instead of a sum, we have a difference. The property is the limit as x approaches a of the quantity f of x minus g of x equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. As an example, if we are given the limit as x approaches two of the quantity x squared minus x, we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches two of x squared minus the limit as x approaches two of x. And we already determined the two limits on the right. The limit as x approaches two of x squared is equal to four, and then we have minus the limit as x approaches two of x, which is two. Four minus two is equal to two. To verify this property, we can look at the graph of the original function given by x squared minus x, which again is graphed here in black. Notice how as we approach two from the left and the right, we are approaching a function value of two. And again, we could also determine this limit by performing direct substitution. Next, we have the limit as x approaches a of k, some constant, times f of x equals k, some constant, times the limit as x approaches a of f of x. As an example, if we are given the limit as x approaches two of two x squared, which means two times x squared, we can rewrite this as two times the limit as x approaches two of x squared. And we already determined the limit as x approaches two of x squared is equal to four, which gives us two times four, which is equal to eight. Again, to verify this, we can look at the graph of the original function given by two x squared, graphed here in black. Notice as we approach two from the left and the right, we are approaching the function value of eight, verifying the property. Next, we have the limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x times the limit as x approaches a of g of x. As an example, if we are given the limit as x approaches two of x squared times x, which we could rewrite as x cubed, but because we have a product here, we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches two of x squared times the limit as x approaches two of x. And again, we already know the value of these two limits the limit as x approaches two of x squared is equal to four, giving us four times. The limit as x approaches two of x is equal to two. Four times two is equal to eight. To verify, let's look at the graph of the original function given by x squared times x, which is really x cubed, shown here in black. As we approach two from the left and the right, we do approach a function value of eight, which again we can also verify by performing direct substitution. The next property involves a quotient where we have the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches a of g of x. As an example, we have the limit as x approaches two of x squared divided by x, which does simplify, but because we have a quotient, we can write this as the limit as x approaches two of x squared 
divided by the limit as x approaches 2 of x. We already know the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared is equal to 4. The limit as x approaches 2 of x is equal to 2. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. To verify this, again, we can graph the original function given by x squared divided by x, which does simplify to x as long as x or the denominator does not equal 0, which does give us a line with a hole at the origin. But as we approach 2 from the left and the right, we can see the function value does approach 2, verifying the property. Next, we have the limit as x approaches a of the nth power of f of x equals the nth power of the limit as x approaches a of f of x. As an example, if we are given the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared raised to the second power, we can rewrite this as the square of the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared. Looking at the right side, we know the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared is equal to 4, giving us the square of 4, which is equal to 16. Again, to verify, let's graph the original function, which is given by the square of x squared, which is equal to x to the fourth. Notice as we approach 2 from the left and the right, we are approaching the function value of 16, which again we could have found by performing direct substitution. And finally, for the last property, we have the limit as x approaches a of the nth root of f of x equals the nth root of the limit as x approaches a of f of x. As an example, if we are given the limit as x approaches 2 of the square root of x squared, we can rewrite this as the square root of the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared. We know this limit is equal to 4, which gives us the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Again, to verify this, we could graph the original function given by the square root of x squared, which simplifies to the absolute value of x. Looking at the graph, as we approach 2 from the left and the right, we can see we are approaching the function value of 2, which once again we could have found by performing direct substitution. So while most of the time these properties are not required to determine a particular limit, they can be helpful in some cases, and they are all valid properties of limits. I hope you found this helpful.